Excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. I count him braver who overcomes his desires than him who conquers his enemies, for the hardest victory is over self. The high-minded man must care more for the truth than for what people think. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Anybody can become angry. This is easy. But to be angry with the right person, and to the right degree, and at the right time, and for the right purpose, and in the right way, this is not within everybody's power, and is not easy. The self-indulgent man craves for all pleasant things, and is led by his appetite to choose these things at the cost of everything else. Where your talents and the needs of the world cross, there lies your vocation. Happiness is a quality of the soul, not a function of one's material circumstances. The only stable state is the one in which all men are equal before the law. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. My best friend is the man who in wishing me well, wishes it for my sake. Learning is an ornament in prosperity, a refuge in adversity, and a provision in old age. One swallow does not make a summer, neither does one fine day. Similarly, one day or brief time of happiness does not make a person entirely happy. To write well, express yourself like the common people, but think like a wise man. First, have a definite, clear, practical ideal, a goal, an objective. Second, have the necessary means to achieve your ends, wisdom, money, materials, and methods. Third, Adjust all your means to that end. It is in our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. Man is a goal-seeking animal. His life only has meaning if he is reaching out and striving for his goals. It is easy to perform a good action, but not easy to acquire a settled habit of performing such actions. Democracy arose from men's thinking that if they are equal in any respect, they are equal absolutely. Character is that which reveals moral purpose exposing the class of things a man chooses or avoids. Poetry is finer and more philosophical than history, 
for poetry expresses the universal and history only the particular. Bad people are in conflict with themselves. They desire one thing and will another. Like the incontinent who choose harmful pleasures instead of what they themselves believe to be good. Man is by nature a social animal. An individual who is unsocial naturally and not accidentally is either beneath our notice or more than human. Society is something that precedes the individual. Anyone who either cannot lead the common life or is so self-sufficient as not to need to and therefore does not partake of society is either a beast or a god. Time crumbles things. Everything grows old under the power of time and is forgotten through the lapse of time. I have gained this by philosophy. I do without being ordered what some are constrained to do by their fear or the law. It is not enough to win a war. It is more important to organize the peace. All who have meditated on the art of governing mankind have been convinced that the fate of empires depends on the education of youth. The wise man does not expose himself needlessly to danger, since there are few things for which he cares sufficiently. He is willing in great crisis to give even his life knowing that under certain conditions it is not worthwhile to live. He is of a disposition to do men service, though he is ashamed to have a service done to him. To confer a kindness is the mark of superiority. To receive one is a mark of subordination. He does not take part in public displays. He is open in his dislikes and preferences. He talks and acts frankly because of his contempt for men and things. He is never fired with admiration since there is nothing great in his eyes. He cannot live in complacence with others except it be a friend. Complacence is the characteristic of a slave. He never feels malice and always forgets and passes over injuries. He is not fond of talking. It is no concern of his that he should be praised or that others should be blamed. He does not speak evil of others even of his enemies unless it be to themselves. His carriage is sedate, his voice deep, his speech measured. He is not given to hurry, for he is concerned about only a few things. He is not prone to vehemence, for he thinks nothing very important. A shrill voice and hasty steps come to a man through care. He bears the accidents of life with dignity and grace, making the best of his circumstances like a skillful general who marshals his limited forces with the strategy of war. He is his own best friend and takes delight in privacy. Whereas the man of no virtue or ability is his own worst enemy and is afraid of solitude. Knowledge of the facts differs from knowledge of the reason for the facts. Man is a tamed or civilized animal. Nevertheless, he requires proper instruction and a fortunate nature. And then of all the animals, he becomes the most divine and most civilized. But if he be insufficiently or ill-educated, he becomes the most savage of earthly creatures. If men learn this, it will implant forgetfulness in their souls. They will cease to exercise memory because they rely on that which is written, calling things to remembrance no longer from within themselves, but by means of external marks. What you have discovered is a recipe not for memory, but for reminder. And it is no true wisdom that you offer your disciples, but only its semblance. 
For by telling them of many things without teaching them, you will make them seem to know much, while for the most part they know nothing. And as men filled not with wisdom but with the conceit of wisdom, they will be a burden to their fellows. The man who finds that in the course of his life he has done a lot of wrong, often wakes up at night in terror, like a child with a nightmare, and his life is full of foreboding. But the man who is conscious of no wrongdoing is filled with cheerfulness and with the comfort of old age. Knowledge is the food of the soul, and we must take care, my friend, that the sophist does not deceive us when he praises what he sells, like the dealers wholesale or retail who sell the food of the body, for they praise indiscriminately all of their goods, without knowing what are really beneficial or hurtful. For this feeling of wonder shows that you are a philosopher, since wonder is the only beginning of philosophy. To be afraid of death is only another form of thinking that one is wise when one is not. It is to think that one knows what one does not know. No one knows with regard to death whether it is not really the greatest blessing that can happen to man, but people dread it as though they were certain it is the greatest evil. Rhetoric, it seems, is a producer of persuasion for belief not for instruction in the matter of right and wrong. And so the rhetorician's business is not to instruct a law, court or public meeting in matters of right and wrong, but only to make them believe. Then the case is the same in all other arts for the orator and his rhetoric. There is no need to know the truth of actual matters, but one merely needs to have discovered some device of persuasion which will make one appear to those who do not know, to know better than those who know. Good actions give strength to ourselves and inspire good actions in others. It would be better for me that multitudes of men should disagree with me, rather than that I being one should be out of harmony with myself. Those who are able to see beyond the shadows and lies of their culture will never be understood, let alone believed by the masses. Since those who rule in the city do so because they own a lot, I suppose they're unwilling to enact laws to prevent young people who've had no discipline from spending and wasting their wealth, so that by making loans to them, secured by the young people's property, and then calling those loans in, they themselves become even richer and more honored. Good people do not need laws to tell them to act responsibly, while bad people will find a way around the laws. People are like dirt. They can either nourish you and help you grow as a person, or they can stunt your growth and make you wilt and die. A hero is born among a hundred, a wise man is found among a thousand, but an accomplished one might not be found even among a hundred thousand men. You know that the beginning is the most important part of any work, especially in the case of a young and tender thing, for that is the time at which character is being formed and the desired impression is more readily taken. Shall we just carelessly allow children to hear any casual tales which may be devised by casual persons, and to receive into their minds ideas for the most part the very opposite of those which we should wish them to have when they are grown up?
Anything received into the mind at that age is likely to become indelible and unalterable, and therefore it is most important that the tales which the young first hear should be models of virtuous thoughts. The inexperienced in wisdom and virtue, ever occupied with feasting and such, are carried downward, and there, as is fitting, they wander their whole life long, neither ever looking upward to the truth above them, nor rising toward it, nor tasting pure and lasting pleasures, like cattle, always looking downward with their heads bent towards the ground and the banquet tables. They feed, fatten, and fornicate. In order to increase their possessions, they kick and butt with horns and hooves of steel and kill each other, insatiable as they are. Excellence is not a gift, but a skill that takes practice. We do not act rightly because we are excellent, in fact, we achieve excellence by acting rightly. Human behavior flows from three main sources, desire, emotion, and knowledge. That's what education should be, I said. The art of orientation. Educators should devise the simplest and most effective methods of turning minds around. It shouldn't be the art of implanting sight in the organ, but should proceed on the understanding that the organ already has the capacity, but it is improperly aligned and isn't facing the right way. The price good men pay for indifference to public affairs is to be ruled by evil men. The society we have described can never grow into reality or see the light of day, and there will be no end to the troubles of states, or indeed of humanity itself, till philosophers become rulers in this world, or till those we call kings and rulers really and truly become philosophers and political power and philosophy thus come into the same hands. Never discourage anyone who continually makes progress, no matter how slow. The difficulty, my friends, is not in avoiding death, but in avoiding unrighteousness for that runs faster than death. There are two things a person should never be angry at, what they can help and what they cannot. Bodily exercise when compulsory does not harm the body, but knowledge when it is acquired under compulsion obtains no hold on the mind. 